Hi everyone. Assume that you're having a Skype conversation or watching something on the TV or on the internet, just like this presentation, and you have certain audiovisual problems with a low signal or poor connection. Nowadays, this kind of problems are really common to us, and they could be about, uh, about the audio or video or both of them. Did you ever think that will distortion in one or both modalities affect your memory about what you are watching? Research has shown that different types of perceptual fluence manipulations have certain effects on people's actual memory and their predictions about their memory. In our study, we manipulated perceptual fluence in both auditory and vision modalities, and our aim was investigating the contribution of perceptual disfluence in multiple modalities to memory predictions and actual memory with an experimental setting more compatible with real life. For this study, we chose an application from real life, and it was cooking, because watching or listening to someone prepare a recipe provides nearly the same information. So we choose four different kinds of food recipes that are not common. Each had 20 steps, and each step revised to have ideas. And so how the videos are prepared and manipulated? Uh, first of all, short videos were filmed for each ID unit, and these videos combined for creating 50 second long videos for each step of each recipe. Then for the audio, each step sentences were digitally recorded. Thus, the uh, stimuli used in this experiments created by combining the intact and distorted versions of these videos and recordings. We used a two by two factorial design, which resulted in four different conditions, and I'm going to show them to you now. This is the intact and intact audio condition. Soğan ve sarımsakları ekleyip karıştırın. Intact video distorted audio condition. Tekiç bir koyu kutatlı kırpı şekeri ekleyin. Distorted video intact audio condition. İçlerini sıvı yağ ile yağlayıp pul biber serpin. And lastly, distorted video distorted audio condition. Patlıcanlı süpür kutu kutlayın. So there were three main phases in the study. In the study phase, uh, videos present on the computer by using PowerPoint, and each video was placed on a different slide, which was set to proceed automatically after 15 seconds. And after each video, participants asked to make predictions about how well will they remember uh, the video they have just watched in the following three quarters. So we call these memory predictions judgments of learning, in short, JRAs. And in the distraction phase, they ask to solve automatic problems for three minutes. And lastly, in the recall phase, they were, they were given a 10 minutes uh, pre recall test in which they ask to write down everything they remember from the videos. In experiment one, we had 48 participants and we used a video subject design. This means that each participant was exposed to all four conditions. And since we have four different recipes, we had four steady distraction test types. Results show that uh, JOS were significantly affected by the disfluence manipulation only in the auditory modality, and recall performance was not affected. So participants gave higher JOS for videos with intact audio than the videos with distorted audio, regardless of the visual qualities of the videos. And there were two critical factors in experiment one that might contribute to the results. So in experiment two, we addressed those. First one was the story-like cycles between items. Uh, this might make participants refer to their scripts about cooking, which in turn might have affected their JRs and memory. And second one, was, second one was common idea units between recipes. For controlling these factors, 32 independent, independent and unique steps were chosen from the four recipes that have been used in experiment one. And this selection eliminated the logical order between items and reduced the number of uh, common idea units to minimum. So in experiment two, we had 40 participants, and the procedure was nearly the same as experiment one, only with one exception. This time, we only have one set instruction test type. Results show that participants' jails were affected by both auditory and visual fluencies significantly, and the interaction between them was significant as well. And but recall remain unaffected, just like in experiment one. So this interaction showed that participants' JLs affected auditory fluency more than visual fluency, because when auditory modality was fluent, participants gave higher JLs compared to the condition in which both modalities were disfluent. You can see descriptors here. 
And in this study, we found that effective auditory discrepancy was significant both when the items were logically ordered or not. However, the uh, effect of visual discrepancy was significant only when there was no logical order between items. And also, uh, memory performance remained unaffected in both experiments. And this results can be explained by perceptual fluency hypothesis. And it states that items that are perceived more easily and fluently in the time, at the time of encoding leads to higher memory predictions than these fluent ones. However, when uh, we use perceptual fluency as a cue, uh, this might not necessarily reflect our actual memory performance. So there could be dissociations between JLs and memory, just like we see in this experiment. Lastly, we can say that um, the effect of auditory modality on JLs was more dominant than visual modality when perceptual influence was disrupted in both modalities for this specific manipulation. So this is the end of my presentation. Hope you find it interesting. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Thank you so, so much for listening.